I'm somewhat reminiscing as I look through this video and put voice to it. So you'll have to bear with me because I'm not going to go back over and re-record everything that I think about as I go. And here is the ultimate bush plane, the Turbine Otter. This is a trip I made to Alaska in 2008. Doug Keller and I set off for the Alaskan Airmen Show, the May Day Fly-In, which included the Stoll Contest, and spend a little time out at Ultima Thule Lodge, a lodge that Paul and Donna Claus own. This is pre-season to their regular lodge activities. During this time, they usually do something with the Discovery Channel or some other Red Bull type climbing expedition or maybe just a private climbing expedition. Doug and I left Yakima with the Carbon Cub. It was uh, basically a brand new airplane. Doug was to bring it to Alaska and display it at the Alaskan Airmen Show and then show it off at the Stoll Competition. During that time period, uh, quite a few of us flew the airplane to see who could perform the best in it and at some point it was chosen that Doug would fly it and I believe Paul Claus was going to fly it and then of course Jim Richmond because he owns Cub Crafters. Um, so during the Stoll competition I believe all three of those guys flew it and I think Paul Claus had the world record 19 foot takeoff if I remember correctly. Doug and I had a few days to play around at Ultima Thule Lodge before we headed for Valdez, there's about a week's time between the Airman Show and Valdez, so we headed out to Ultima Thule Lodge and we played around for uh, I think three or four days. This is some video I shot during that time with Bushwhacker. In fact, um, it was the Discovery Channel that was doing the filming at Ultima Thule Lodge because all this film was shot by a professional photographer that worked for the Discovery Channel. In exchange, I used my airplane Bushwhacker as a platform for them to film the Otter from, and we did some filming for a day. This place that I'm playing is up a drainage called Goat Creek, and uh, it had some open areas where the snow had started to melt off, and so I started picking those out to actually do some takeoff and landings. And then I progressed to actually landing in the snow with the 35 inch bush wheels. And you'll see here that in some places the snow is actually pretty deep. With the 35 inch bush wheels, if you try to turn in the snow, it's really hard to get yourself turned around because the tires just slide when you put the brakes on. So at one point I needed Doug to help me get the airplane straightened out. this spot and uh, as you can see I displaced a rock from this pocket here moved it close to five feet this is the rock I can barely lift it so you can hit some pretty good sized rocks with the bush wheels and not damage your airplane you wouldn't want to go out and seek out this size of rock in a rocky craggy field but they are insurance when you do hit something this big. So 101, you can hit rocks this big. Not necessarily a good idea. I look for the nice sandy spots like these here in between the rocks if I can find them. So that's, uh, that's some information. Whenever I would get back to the lodge after filming for a day, Paul Claus was always interested to see what I was doing with my airplane and I showed him this footage and he was actually pretty surprised at how well the 35s did in that deep of snow but his first words were that's pretty dangerous and to proceed with caution all snow has its own definite types of resistance you know you can have a real light powdery snow a sugar snow 
or hard packed snow and all those snows are going to play a different role in what happens when the bush wheels go into them so his thinking was you know you really don't know what the snow conditions are and you probably won't really know until you put your tires down in it and then you're all of a sudden over on your back and his final departing words were that's what skis are for so when paul claus says something to that effect i take notice i listen to people that have been there before me and done things that i haven't done people like paul claus kirk ellis cole ellis those are the guys that have kind of laid down the early tracks for people like me coming after them. My early exposure into the video world of bush flying was Super Cub Hardcore 1 and 2. Both those videos had Paul Claus, Kirk Ellis, Cole Ellis. These guys were the guys that I looked up to. I never dreamed that I would actually meet them someday and spend time with them, all of them being very quality people. The Carbon Cub that Doug is flying is Carbon Cub number one. Jim Richmond contacted Doug and in exchange for engineering work, they built this Carbon Cub in collaboration. A lot of the ideas have been now put into the Carbon Cub that's in the marketplace. This first Carbon Cub was very nose heavy. It had an 0360 engine with a 90 inch propeller, a metal propeller. It did have three inch forward gear, I believe, but it was a very nose heavy airplane. It really needed a Cato prop. Had cold air induction and it had pretty amazing performance. I flew against it in the Stoll competition and I believe Carbon Cub beat me by 30 feet in combined takeoff and landing, if I remember right. It had like a 19 foot takeoff and a 56 foot landing. And I had like a 39 foot takeoff and a 59 foot landing. Anyway, the year I chose to show up at Valdez, I got beat by the Carbon Cub. A few of the notable things that weren't right for a Bush airplane was, it had a smoked windscreen and the oil temperature ran about 260 to 280 degrees in cruise flight. Anyway, those were a few things that needed to be dialed in. Doug had to run it full rich to keep it cool enough while we made our journey up and back. Here, the otters departing for Valdez, each made a fly-in. Paul would take the otter to Valdez and do a stole demonstration with this big airplane. And it always pleased the crowd. Here, Doug Keller's flying the Carbon Cub first. And then the next person flying the Carbon Cub is Jim Richmond. It's kind of a historic video, so I figured I'd include it in this. And then right after the Carbon Cub, we have Kirk Ellis in his airplane, the Hulk. It's a four-place Super Cub before four-place Super Cubs were even a thing. Just last moose season, I got to fly side-by-side -side with Kirk Ellis and his Hulk. It's not the first time I've visited Kirk before, but I actually got to spend a little bit of time and see what the airplane will do full of gear and hunters. Pretty amazing airplane and a guy that really knows how to fly it. And then right after Kirk and his Hulk, we've got Paul in his 160 horse Alpha Cub. It's a lightweight Super Cub. He's got it on 31 inch bush wheels in this. Normally, nowadays, he flies it on 35s. But Paul can jump from 185 to Otter, back to Super Cub, back to 185, back to Otter, and he always knows where his wheels are at. Then the last person up is Cole Ellis. I don't know Cole as well as his brother Kirk, but he's one heck of a bush pilot also. Hits his mark every time. Does it like it's just another day at the job. And then last in this lineup, I don't know this pilot. And I'm including this just so that people can see that if you don't practice and you don't know your airplane, things can happen pretty quickly to ruin a $150,000 airplane. 
This isn't too bad of an accident. I've seen a lot worse. Well, it's time for Doug and I to head for home. This is usually a two to three day event. I think our first stop was White Horse for the night. We got a late start. And then we flew the next day on to Smithers. And then I believe we crossed from Smithers down towards uh, Vancouver, BC. And we ended up camping out on a gravel bar just outside of Vancouver for the night. All in all, it went pretty well. I remember fighting weather a little bit coming back, more so going up, but that's just part of the game. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit subscribe. If you didn't, sorry. <laughs>